This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I am the host of today's program, DeSoto Brown. And instead of our normal human humane architecture, this week we are on an alternate schedule and we're hosting people from the Dokomomo Group. And the Dokomomo Group is a group of people who support and want to preserve mid-century architecture, that is mid-20th century architecture. And our host today is Don Hibbard. Well, our guest today is Don Hibbard. And we've got a very interesting subject to talk about, something which is all over the place, something which most people don't even give a thought to, was very common at one time, but not so common now. It's the jealousy window. And we're going to be talking about what the heck the jealousy window is, and you can see in the photograph behind us, underneath the plate glass windows of that suburban house, those are wooden jealousy windows. Tell us what the history is. Let's get started with the history of what the jealousy window is. Don, okay, take it away. Well, I, I guess I'll start with the name. That's fine. And uh, the name actually comes from the French and there were louvered windows back as far as the 1600s, and the French called them jaloux. And if we have another slide, I'll show you why. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go to our first slide. There we are. And this is actually interior shutters, but it shows the thing very well. The jaloux, you can open and shut, and they slant it in. And if you're on the outside, you cannot see in. Right. But when you're on the inside, you can see out. And the French felt this caused a jealousy situation. And there and we so, are. The so, world is full of jealous people. Right. And so it was called jaloux. All right. And when the man invented the window, the term jaloux was very popular in New Orleans. And so he just picked it up and used it. And jealousy is what it's kind of ended up being called. Yes. That's right. That's right. So that's where I thought would start. OK, excellent. Um, now, what's next? Well, let's, do you want to go to, there's yes, our next slide. Yes, I, I just wanted to show you more, this is an Iolani Palace. Correct. And uh, again, internal shutters, right. and if you take the next slide, you can see it operates on a center Correct. Uh, bar. bar. That you and, can pivot uh, up and down. Right, exactly. And uh, this man, Van Ellis Huff, who was an engineer, That's right. got his degree from the University of Florida. He liked to sail. Mm -hmm. And there's a very little island chain out oh, yeah. directly east of Miami yeah. called Benimi. Yes. And he went out to those islands and he saw these shutters everywhere. And then he said, I can do this better. Okay. Well, let me and, just show everybody right in front of me mm -hmm. if we can go to a shot of me here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is his book. Yes. And his book, which you bought online, and yes. it's called From Mountains to Miami, A Search for Greener Pastures. It's actually this man's life story, but he talks about as you said, yes. inventing the jealousy window. Right. And the whole development. There we are. Came from. All right. And so he had a very interesting life. At the time when he invented the window, uh, it was during the Depression. It was 1937. He applied for the patent and he got it in 1939. But engineering wasn't too pop, is uh, in demand during yeah. the Depression. So he went and he had a carpenter shop. Okay. And so he was essentially b building these jealousy windows yeah. out of his home. By hand. Yes. Yeah. And originally they were all uh, no glass. He didn't right. decide to use glass until during World War II. He figured out you can put glass panes in instead of just wood slats. Correct. And so uh, he was making them there. Right. And what and, we can say is that the, the, the basic shutter concept is the same. However, right. the jealousy window uses considerably larger slats rather than the small right. ones that we see in these old-fashioned ones. And, and this is a technology that goes back centuries, as you said, the movable slats. Right. So in one way, it's not totally new, but the application of it and the size of it is new. Right. And right. essentially, the mechanism for operating Correct. it, he is changes, different. and is it different. makes it more efficient rather than having to just fiddle with that middle stick. Right. OK, what's yes. next? Oh, so he's there doing this. Do. Some architects in Florida are starting to pick up and using yeah. it. Then the Navy hires him in 1940 to put jalousies in all of their housing down at Guantanamo Bay. In Cuba. Yes. And this is and a picture of that. And that's the picture of that development. And on the next picture, right. we'll and show... There it is in the 1950s. Right. And essentially, at this point, he had to take his operations out of the garage. Right. Because it was a giant Correct. commission. So he uh, then uh, opened up a factory 
which had, I thought, the very interesting name of Protect You Jealousy Company. I don't know how much protection yes, those give but, you, but that, that was a, that's a clever word. Well, mm -hmm. one other thing, and then you just said, too, that uh, when we were discussing beforehand, if we go to the next slide, one of the things that he did in later years was to further install more of his windows in other Navy facilities Correct. Right in after, the Pacific. Right after World War II, he went to California, and the, the Navy gave him another giant contract mm -hmm. to put them in in Philippines, in Guam, Johnson Island, in, in Hawaii, right. in their facilities. Right. So this is a picture of um, bachelor officers' quarters for the Navy on Guam in 1957. So it's later than what we were talking about just before this. But if we go to the next picture, we'll see that this is an unusual application in that these are metal shutters. Correct. And this is the only picture I've found of metal right. shutters. But uh, again, it's the, same, it's the same format, same thing as what exactly. you were just talking about. Right. And then we'll go on from there. So our so, next picture, ah, oh, This yes. is, in, during the 50s, right after the war, not only was it in Hawaii, in the yeah. Pacific, but also Florida started having it, and right. also, well, we'll go, California also started to use jalousies. Right, and this is a, a, a design by a man named Paul Rudolph, who was an architect who worked in Florida in the late 40s into the 1950s. And if we go to the next picture, that's of course an architectural rendering. This is a picture of the actual construction of that building, the Cocoon House it was called. And we agree that our friend Martin Despang would yes. love this. It's totally easy breezy because it's got the jalousies on one wall, but the other wall appears to just be screen. It doesn't even look like there's anything no, there. No, it doesn't. Yeah. But I presume it's screen. But that's the, pretty much the ultimate easy breezy type of home you could have. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Ultimate use of the jealousy. Exactly. So our next picture takes us to another use. Yes. What's this? Very much in the 50s, mobile homes picked up on them and started using them. And this is a 1955 mobile home, very much a vintage classic now, but yeah. it still has its original jealousy windows. And it's turquoise and pink, if yes. that's about, a, about as 50s a color combination as you can get. Okay, let's go next. And there we and, go. Yes, when he was in Hawaii working for the Navy here, other people became interested in a man named T. Hao Ho, who was the proprietor of Surfrider Sportswear, mm -hmm was very much enchanted by this and thought that this would be a good market. And he opens up a business in Hawaii selling, uh, it's called Pacific Jalousy Company. And this is the 1949 40th, 49th State Fair. Yes. And they had a display in the fair. And uh, this was, appeared in Pacific Paradise of the Pacific magazine. And they mentioned that this is a new development in ventilation. Right. And so this is this is at that time. This is mm -hmm. a, a new concept. Yes, 1949. Right. It's just coming to Hawaii. Right. And so it, and it's just going to be put on the market. And Ho will put them in his house in Kaneohe, which I'm fortunately I've yet to find. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it still exists, but that would be the first use of uh, the jalousy in a right. house, right. A residential use, which then became all over the place. Absolutely, that's what just we were talking proliferated. about. Proliferated. Absolutely. And also, uh, much to Mr. Huff's disappointment, Correct. the jealousy was very, very easy to make and copy. Right. <laughs> and therefore, people infringed on his patent yeah. right and left. Right. And he did not have money to... Uh, to fight them. Yes, exactly. Right. And so essentially, he gave up. And in 1955 right. or six, he just quit. He didn't make any more. Right. And at yeah. that point, probably there were innumerable other yes. manufacturers up there. Yes, and what he was very bemoaned quite a bit was that most of them made them cheaper than him because he used all crank handles, and his crank handle mechanisms all were made of brass. And that's and something that is we just were just discussing. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next yes. picture because we're going to be discussing the different formats. Now, mm -hmm. this is a very basic concept, but once you look around, you see there are many different types. Exactly. And you said this is, what, 1954? 1954 and Wailai Kahala. And I, I think this could be one of his because this is a handle that can come in and out. Exactly. And into a little hole. And I, right. I, and this, well, it's the whole house still has these, and they all operate perfectly. So I suspect right. that these are brass fixtures. Correct. And uh, so I suspect this might be one of the earlier uses of uh, And my his parents' windows. house has those cranks for pivoting windows. Okay, yes. And yes. Same, same time yes. period. Exactly. Right. right. So and that's, we'll also point out, too, that there are different types of glass. And right. We'll be seeing other types of glass, right. but this is a very clear example of the fluted glass, as Correct. you said, that's got these horizontal yes. stripes. And so it was more for privacy when you closed it. Correct. Okay, next. 
So what, what you were just saying and mm -hmm. what we're about to see is that there are these different mechanisms that different manufacturers Correctly. use. And part of the problem is that they began to use cheaper materials which Correct. eventually wear out. Right. At the time, nobody gave it a great deal of thought, but 50 or 60 years later, which is where we are now, when those gradually fall apart, it can be a problem to get them fixed, replaced, whatever. Yes, you got, this one is in uh, Manoa. This is at a Salvation Army. Right, <laughs> well, and you said 1955. Books. Yes. Right, and, so and that's, that's a crank. Yeah, that's a different crank, but it's a different style that's a crank. Different and style now crank. the mechanism is all built in as one Correct. with the crank. That's higher quality than what I have in my house, yes. but let's keep going. Okay. And here's another one, and this is from the 1960s, early 60s, and again, uh, this is not as good quality and, uh, and it's different style. But, but you'll also notice too that it's in a concrete block wall, right. linoleum floor. This is very typical of the time period. And that's right. something that I think people also need to keep in mind. Inexpensive homes, inexpensive construction was very prevalent during that time. Mm -hmm. It enabled a lot of people to buy a home, but the maintenance of it can be difficult. And the other thing that's very different, which We'll get to in a minute is the expectations people have now versus the expectations of what people had then in terms of the quality of their home and the ventilation in particular. Precisely. Yes. Oh, let's keep going. And this is another version of another crank. Uh, this one, I'm not sure. This might be one that wore out and yeah. they found a replacement a new for one. it. That's, that's, and, and so, you were saying that there are modern ones being made today that are plastic. Right. And, and we were talking about... Primarily lever ones. <laughs> right. Lever ones, but again, mm. once that breaks, yes. forget it. Yes. Right. Okay, next. So... And, and here's an interesting one. This is, uh, this is actually in public housing for senior mm. citizens. Uh, uh, Makua Ali uh, on Klakawa Avenue. I was going to say, yes. yeah. So that's and, actually not that old. This is what, late 70s, early 80s? Uh, no, it was 60s. Oh, is that, okay, yeah, it's a different 60s. one than I'm thinking of. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, they rebuilt Correct. A part they of it. Yeah, yeah, which had been Kalakawa homes. Right, yeah, right, exactly. That's what I was thinking of. And this, but this, uh, again, it's a rather interesting uh, handle, which I hadn't seen anywhere else before. Yeah, and those are kind of a, a pain to use, particularly yeah. if you're an old person trying mm -hmm. to crank that thing. Okay, next. And this, this one's one is on sideways <laughs> Sorry by about mistake, that. but it just shows you the other type of uh, type of movement that you yes. can do. It is stand, instead of turning something by hand, you just simply move the lever up and mm -hmm. down, which is an easier way to do it. Correct. But it doesn't hold in place as well, so you can't right. keep them sort of partly open, and that's mm -hmm. part of a that's a yeah. potential problem. And I think this is a fairly early lever style, yeah. which would come I in so in the late 50s, early 60s. Correct. Okay, and, uh, next. And that's my house. Uh -huh. And uh, my house was built in the 1930s, but the previous owner in the 1960s installed jealousy windows, mm -hmm. um, some of which I took out, but these I kept. And this also works with the lever. And unfortunately, as I was just saying, as these things get older, they're made of aluminum or they're made of pot metal, they don't last that well. So I have to do this, I, I treat these gently because if they break, I don't think that they can be easily replaced. No, and this one too, you may notice that uh, this kind of glass is called opalescent glass. Or right. Not opalescent, excuse me, obscure glass. Obscure glass, and that's, that's yes. another, this is, this is in the bathroom. Right. So they, they put it in, that for, in the bathroom for that reason. It's got a pebble texture. Right, exactly. Instead of clear glass. Okay, next. And this is another uh, senior citizen housing, and this I found this lever to be a very interesting style of Do lever. Do you just push it up and yeah, pull it down? Yeah, exactly. Within that semicircle. Yes. Okay. Because so I wasn't quite clear. Yeah. yeah. No, it's quite an interesting. I, I haven't seen that anywhere else no, either. And, no. No. Uh, That's why I wasn't even sure what it was. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Next. And, and here's, here's a different type. Yes, here's another bathroom. And this, this is the most common bound lever. I think the next picture will show it. Yeah, next picture. Yeah, there we and, are. And then you can, see, you can just see it's this, this, the handle that's most typically sound, found now. And I think this is, well, this house is from 1956. So okay. they had it early, but I, I don't know if these have been replaced from Correct. the originals. Right. And, right. Uh, but more, I find this a lot with late 60s, 70s houses. Yeah, I would think so. Next. So one of the things, okay, and here we see the, the, the two types of glass right. in use. Yep. Now, one of the things that's very important to note about this, which we discussed, the security. Um, people learned quite quickly that you can remove the glass 
from the clamps at either end of it right and you can break into a house and this was something that became a big problem for all the many many homes and apartments that had jealousy windows the other thing of course is that they break and that can be a problem but i think the major problem or the major thing that we deal with now is that as we were just discussing before the show people have the expectation of a lot more luxury now uh, this was complete this was considered a completely normal way to ventilate your home back in that time period people now buying new homes expect air conditioning and uh, even central air conditioning mm -hmm. people are not happy with the idea of having to just let the air blow in and the problem is that that uses fossil fuel that's more expensive it means that we have to bring that fuel in we have to run electricity to do it etc so um, I've learned from Martin that uh, the more natural ventilation you use the less fuel you use is a good thing this is fuel free ventilation and it yes. would behoove us mm -hmm. to be more conscious of those that at, mm -hmm. that attribute today. And at the time when it was at most popular in the 50s, 60s, 70s, this was the stand. This was the most efficient way to ventilate your house. Oh, absolutely. And uh, so it was actually considered. Oh, this is new technology. Yeah. This is this yes. is actually advanced living. That's right. And uh, rather than thinking now, oh. Where's the AC? <laughs> exactly. No, that, and that's the point. This was a technological advance. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about jealousies is the reason they would have been used in uh, mobile homes is they don't take any space. You don't have to have space for a window to be pushed to the side. Right. You don't have to have a space for a full fixed pane window to pivot out, to pivot upward or down. It's just contained within the wall right as part of the unit of the um, window. Correct. And that's and they're lightweight too yes. because the metal is lightweight. So particularly for a mobile home, that's a positive attribute. And for builders, etc., these also are useful. It's just that again, as we said, we have the expectation of a more luxurious lifestyle now, to which in which these don't fit that well. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Let's go to our next slide. And here's a different use. Yes, this is a, a variation. Yeah. Uh, this is on a house in Lanikai. The house was actually in the 1920s, but they enclosed the uh, lanai in yeah. the 50s. Right. And this, they, instead of regular horizontal uh, jalousies, they mounted them vertically. Right. And this is actually run on a chain, and so the chain oh. opens and closes it. <laughs> okay, I know what you mean, like a metal chain. Yes. And it goes yeah, exactly. over a little, little yeah. wheel. Right, and right. that will opening, that operates the uh, yeah. window. And th so these are wood. And the interesting right. thing there is that wood is very private, but it also cuts out all the light. Exactly. Too. You don't get the view unless it's open. Unless it's open. So there are positive attributes to mm -hmm. wood jealousies, but mm -hmm. not 100% yeah. like glass. And I noticed that uh, the Department of Education, they'll use jealousies in almost all their classrooms, but they're using wood as well. Oh. And I think that's to discourage the children from looking, looking out. outside and yes. being distracted during yes. <laughs> yeah. That was one but, of my problems back in the day, <laughs> I can remember. Yeah. Okay. Well in the next picture we see a similar usage of the vertical wooden louvers or the vertical wooden jalousies. This, however, is at the Coco Palms Hotel in the King's Cottages. Now the King's Cottages were separate freestanding structures and they were the most expensive rooms at the Coco Palms Hotel. This is called the Blue Hawaii Suite or perhaps it might even been, been the entire Blue Hawaii building. And the reason it's called that is because Elvis Presley filmed uh, a good section of the, his film, 1961's Blue Hawaii at the Coco Palms. Now the thing that I think is interesting is that if you look on the left there are those, that's the original use of the slats, the wooden slats mm -hmm. in what obviously was an accordion fold door. So because there's probably not a lot of, I don't know how easily it was, how easy it was to move those mm -hmm. vertical wooden louvers. If you couldn't, then you would have closed that accordion door with those old fashioned slats Correct. for more privacy. So it seems kind of like a complicated way to do it, but as long as the customers liked it, who cares? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you'll notice those blue touches in the uh, the pillows and the uh, lampshade. That's because this is the blue, blue Hawaii blue. and the blue carpet, the blue shag carpet on the floor is very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, next picture. 
this. Okay, here yes. we are back to the wooden slats. Yes, and this is in your haunt. This is in my haunt at Bishop Museum, where mm -hmm. I work. This is the Pauahi Building. The Pauahi Building is a collection building. It was built in 1964, and actually, originally, all the windows in the building were jalousies. Now, these are in the bathroom, so they have solid wooden slats for privacy, and there's, you can see also the handle. Right. Made sure to take a picture of the handle because we were going to include that in the show. But the rest of the building has glass jealousies. Uh, they are shielded on the outside by a decorative concrete uh, grill. Right. But the problem for Pauahi Hall is that, just as we were saying, originally that was all natural ventilation. Well, that's nice for keeping things cool, but for collections in a museum, you do want to be able to shut the world out and to keep bugs out. So it's been necessary to add central air conditioning to this building and to close all the jealousies pretty much permanently. Well, next picture. And we've got, okay, this is, okay, this is something that I think is particularly interesting. Here are tract houses, and this is on Kalani Iki Street in about 1961. So this is right by Kalani High School. And if you'll notice, this is the type of thing which many, many tract houses used in Hawaii at this time period. There are fixed plate glass windows, but along the bottom, we've got a row of wooden jealousy windows. Right. And that is the, again, this is what people were happy with at the time. This is what people expected for ventilation. People didn't have air conditioners. People, few people had room air conditioners. Nobody had central air conditioning. We relied on natural ventilation through opening and closing windows. Correct. And after World War II, the picture window became very Absolutely. popular. Absolutely, yes. And so this was a way of accommodating the picture window right. and still maintaining ventilation. Exactly. And you can see on the left-hand uh, house that, you know, the side walls had jalousies. Yes. So you will get your cross ventilation coming in from the bottom to the top. Correct. And so that'll all move through. Another small interesting feature on these houses, uh, in the 60s, this, these are all single wall buildings, but they started to put the girt, which uh, keeps the building from bowing, the walls mm -hmm. from bowing. Uh, they, they used to be in the plantation days always on the outside of the yeah, building. Yeah, right, exactly. So you've got an exterior framework. Right, but in the 60s, they were thinking more streamlined, yes. modern, yes. and they hide the girt by putting it on Correct. the interior of the house. So you had a little shelf on the interior. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and for me, in my childhood, which is when this, was, this picture was taken, um, you know, so many of my friends lived in houses like this, and this is what everybody's expectation was. Um, to, our look, to our view today, they look very inexpensive, maybe too cheap. We expect double wall construction, we mm -hmm. expect more. At the same time, this is what enabled a lot of people to be able to buy their own homes. And I think you and I are probably going to be doing some more shows this year right. about this entire phenomenon of suburban life suburban development, tract homes, et cetera, here in the Hawaiian Islands. Exactly. Yeah. So that's something that we'll be going to be doing in the future. I think it's just about time for us to wrap this show up. I think we covered the field well. I think we covered the field well. And Don, thank you so much for coming in and um, talking about this. Again, this is something that seems incredibly prosaic and every day, mm -hmm. but as time passes, these things go away. We begin exactly. to appreciate them, look back at them, and be interested mm -hmm. in them. And one of the whole purposes of Docomomo is the preservation. So we want to preserve houses right. that have these. Exactly, very much. And uh, interested in anybody that has a different kind of jealousy, oh, yeah. let us know. Let us know. We'll find out another, yet another strange world of the jealousy window. Exactly. The fascinating and exciting world of the jealousy window. Well, thank you all for being with us uh, today and watching this particular program. Uh, we'll be back next week with one of our regular Human Humane Architecture programs. Martin Despang will be joining us all the way from Germany. And we're going to be talking about the West Oahu College campus that time. So we want you to keep, we want you to keep watching Think Tech. We want you to keep watching the various shows. And I will be seeing you in the future. And uh, Don will be back as well. So until then, thank you, everybody, for watching. See you next time. Yes.